Aloha, and welcome back to another episode of The Art of Astronomy, part of the Mauna Kea at Home series. It's great to see you again. I'm your host, Allie Kat, and I work as both an artist and a part-time telescope operator for the James Clerk Maxwell Telescope on Mauna Kea, where I collect data on star-forming regions and other astronomical phenomenon at the submillimeter wavelength. This Mauna Kea at Home episode is designed to help you become more familiar with the night sky as you learn through creating your own constellation themed artwork. In this video, I will share with you star stories from popular myths and Hawaiian names and navigational information, since we are once again coming to you from the beautiful big island of Hawaii. To further help you connect the dots, we will also be drawing out our stars and constellations to make beautiful art together. To create alongside me, you will only need a pencil, a ruler, and a piece of paper. Today's exercise is going to be big. So if you have a larger piece of paper, that would do good. But make do with whatever you have. After we're done drawing, you can further complete your work with crayons, colored pencils, markers, or just gentle shading with your regular graphite pencil. If you have a canvas and paints, please feel free to paint your stars if you'd like, or save up all of your drawings, and when you have enough, Cut out the stars and set them on the floor or the wall or any place you'd want to surround yourself with the beauty of the universe. Are you ready to create and learn? Excellent. This is going to be a fun lesson. Let's start. On today's episode, we're going to focus on traditional Hawaiian navigation by taking a look at one of the four Hawaiian navigational star lines. This star line passes through five constellations, starting at the North Star and ending at a constellation commonly known as the Southern Cross. The Hawaiians named this star line Ka'iwi Kuomo'o, the backbone. But first, what is a star line? A Hawaiian wayfinder out at sea memorizes the positions of stars in the night sky in order to use them to navigate. On cloudy nights, when only parts of the sky are visible, they may recognize isolated stars or star groups and imagine the rest of the celestial sphere around them. To help remember the pattern of stars in the sky, Hawaiian navigators organized the stars above Hawaii into four star lines, each line taking up about one-fourth of the celestial sphere. Ka'iwi Kuomo'o is the star line most visible in the northern Pacific skies at night during the spring. Ka'iwi Kuomo'o starts at the North Star, which you may also know as Polaris. The Hawaiians call it Hokupa'a, or the fixed star, because as the other constellations rise and set throughout the night, Hokupa'a stays in the same place. This is because Hokupa'a is positioned almost directly on top of the line of the Earth's axis. Hokupa'a is one of the most important stars in the night sky for navigation because it shows you what direction is north. The farther north you move in latitude, the higher in the night sky Hokupa'a will appear. The farther south you move in latitude, the lower on the horizon it will appear until you dip below the equator. Then you will be in the southern hemisphere of the earth, where Hokupa'a will no longer be visible. The South Pole does not have a star that appears directly over it to help the wayfinder find due south, but it does have a constellation that points to it. Here is where we find the Southern Cross. The Hawaiians call the Southern Cross Hanaya Kamalama, which means cared for by the moon. In the Northern Hemisphere, you will not be able to see Hanaya Kamalama until you get down to 26 degrees north of the equator. At 26 degrees north latitude, it will be very low on the horizon and will rise higher as you go farther south, the opposite of what happens to the North Star. The Hawaiian Islands are at roughly 19 degrees north latitude, so Hanaya Kamalama, the Southern Cross, is going to be visible low on the horizon for only a few months, rising in April and setting completely by mid-July. The star Hokupa'a and the constellation Hanaya Kamalama are the beginning and end of our spring star line. So now we need to connect our stars along the rest of the backbone. Starting from the north, after we leave Hokupa'a, we come to what the Hawaiians call Nahiku. Most people will recognize this group of stars as the asterism of the Big Dipper, which is part of the Greek constellation Ursa Major. Nahiku means the seven, and all the seven stars of this grouping are named in Hawaiian after a number. Hikukai, the brightest star, is first, followed by Hikulua, the second, then Hikukolu, the third, and so on until you get to the final star, Hikupau. Pau is, of course, the Hawaiian word for finished or done. The handle of the Big Dipper will arc over to the Greek constellation of the farmer Boetes, to the star Arcturus, otherwise known as Hokulea, the star of gladness which is a very important star to the Hawaiian people. Certain stars are known to pass directly above specific islands when they are at their zenith, or highest point in the sky. Hokulea is a zenith star for Hawaii Island and signals to Hawaiian wayfinders when they are arriving home. 
Next, we pass through the constellation of Virgo to its brightest star, Spica. In Hawaiian, Spica's name is Hikianalia. Hikianalia is Hokulea's sister star, meaning they rise in the night sky together at the latitude of the Hawaiian Islands. We then pass through the constellation of Corvus the Crow, or Me'e, the voice of joy, before we finally reach the end of our backbone, the Southern Cross. Do you remember its Hawaiian name? That's right, Hanaya Kama Lama. Let's take one more look at the entire star line. It does really look like a backbone. But whose backbone? Ka'ivi Kuomo'o, according to the Hokulea archive, means more specifically, bone back lizard. In Hawaiian legend and folklore, Mo'o is a type of giant lizard deity. A popular legend involving a Mo'o is of Hi'iaka, the youngest and most beloved sister of Pele, the Hawaiian volcano goddess. Hi'iaka is sent on a journey to retrieve Pele's lover, Lohiau. Along the way, Hi'iaka encounters giant Mo'o and battles them using the lightning hidden in her skirt. These days, we still see plenty of Mo'o on our islands, just in the much smaller form of the friendly gecko. Our inspiration for our stars today comes from a traditional symbol of ocean navigation, the nautical star. Before we begin drawing, please print out both this picture of a nautical star and this image of Ka'ivi Kuomo'o to use her reference. If you don't have a printer, no worries, you can always go back and pause the video. A nautical star is a five-pointed star. Each point is divided in half, with one half being a solid black and the other half being white or a color. They bear the distinctive color pattern of the compass rose found on many maps. Because of this, the nautical star also represents a traveler or sailor's way home whenever they were lost in life or travel. You will see the star most often depicted as an informal signifier indicating membership in the Coast Guard or Navy, or as a popular symbol used often in old school flash tattoo designs. A nautical star tattoo was believed to keep a sailor on course. As such, they were also considered to help guide a sailor home. Our star line stretches from the north to the south and covers a large part of the sky. If you would like it to fit it all on one surface, your stars will have to be very small or your surface really big. Remember, you can always cut these out and stick them to a larger surface too. Altogether, we are drawing 14 nautical stars, 18 if you include the stars in Corvus the Crow slash Me'e. When you draw your stars out, keep your sketching light. Nautical stars look hard to draw because of how straight the lines are, but in reality, they are as easy to draw as connecting five points and then going over your sketch with a ruler. Make an upside down V and then draw lines from the bottom right to the top left, from the top left across to the top right, and then crossing down to the bottom left. If you kept your sketch light, you can gently erase the lines inside the star. From there, you can separate each spike into two sections by drawing a line from the tip of the point you're working on to the opposite side of the star, to the crook in between the opposing two points. After you are finished, shade or color every other side of each point of your stars. You can use markers for a black and white effect or colored pens or pencils. Try to vary the sizes of the stars to match the size of the stars in your reference photo. The bigger stars appear brighter in the night sky than the smaller ones. Try to make every separate part of this star line a different color, or maybe make one star pencil shaded while the other ones use marker. Once you have your star line completed, make it yours. I drew out a crow for the constellation of Corvus the Crow, and then I drew a picture of a gecko off to the side to mirror the curve of our star backbone. Make this your masterpiece, the sky is the limit. Thank you so much for joining me on another episode of The Art of Astronomy. I'm your host, Alley Cat. Ahoo we ho!